Hey, welcome back. We're doing another Composer Secrets video. Thanks to everybody who was so supportive of the last one. It's so fun to do these, dive into my DAW, create a little piece of music to share specific examples of tips and techniques that I've learned over the years. Today's video, we're jumping in. We're gonna look at 15 different techniques that I use to make more exciting, epic music. So whether you're doing underscore or pop or EDM or even trailer music, especially trailer music, there's all these different ways to try to build excitement, to build tension, to make your music more exhilarating for the listener. I've kind of had them in the back of my head. I came up with 17 of them here that we're going to cover in the next 20 minutes. But before we do that, I want to say a big thank you to Orchestral Tools. They're the sponsor of today's video. Orchestral Tools just released the Berlin Woodwind Soloist Bundle Offer. I just listened to the demos on the website, and these are some really great close mic intimate sounding woodwinds. And right now you can save 45% off the Berlin Woodwind Soloist Bundle. That offer ends March 3rd, 2021. Now I'll include a link first thing below take you straight over to Orchestral Tools so you can listen to the demos, watch the videos, and learn all about these fantastic sounding woodwind libraries. All right, I got my track pulled up here. We're going to listen through it. Then I'm going to break down these different techniques I've used throughout the entire piece to try to hopefully keep your attention and add more excitement to the music. Let's dive in. So the way this piece starts out, we've got just some very simple textures. It's kind of like the invitation. It's like setting the tone here. I've used the uh, Musique box from Sound Iron, one of their beautiful sound design patches. Then the main theme is so simple. And one of the reasons I chose to do this theme with the one and two and, it's just like two hits the same note is because that way we can reveal each of the little things that create the tension as we go. So this is a cylindrum. It's a sample from Sound Iron again, and I just love the sound of these. These are these big tubes that they sampled hitting them. But to give it more depth, to make it more cinematic and more epic, I went ahead and used Sound Toys Effects Rack, and I use this all the time. I love this thing. So let's listen to the cylindrum clean, and then you hear what I did to tweak it out from a starting point of the butterfly effect preset. Now on. So right now, this is just a very simple rhythm 
repeated over and over. And that is one of the first things you can do to create tension. By having something continuously doing the same thing over and over, that is going to in itself add tension to your piece. With my cylindrum here, my light greens are lower velocities, and then it moves slowly up the velocity curve of the amount of pressure I'm putting on the key, which gives it a stronger hit. Stronger hit means a little bit more bite, especially up in the high end. It's gonna have a little more excitement and attack. Which brings us to the third bit that adds some excitement, and you may not have noticed it. I used a bowed symbol in the background, just with a little bit of that tense sound that only a bowed symbol can give us. It's there subtly, but it gives another dimension, and bowed symbols always sound creepy. They always make you agitated because of the way they hit your ear. But the next techniques here to add excitement is to start subdividing your time. And I did that here with another sound iron instrument, Shake. This is one of Sound Iron's collections of shakers, world percussion. And then drop a bass. I used a sample library substance from output. That there is just the big stupid bass part by its own, but when I added these effects, some delay, a little bit of echo, it gives it a lot more depth. So just as I showed how we were subdividing the beat now to create more excitement, it's gonna have a natural propensity, propensity, propensity? A natural propensity to feel like we're pushing somewhere, we're gonna subdivide it even further with some strange body percussion that kind of just pop out. Now this hand percussion, it's actually a free instrument from Orchestral Tools. They've got this new thing called Sign Factory. It's pretty awesome. It's a free instrument subscription. Basically, you just sign up on their page. Right now you can get their free grand piano, their free studio percussion, and their free string ensembles. I'll include a link over to Orchestral Tools Sign Factory if you want to sign up there. I'll also include links to everything I use throughout this whole video in case you want to do some more research on any of these instruments. Now I do have a cymbal roll going on right up until we get to this first big climax. And another thing I did to add some excitement and also add a little space for this crazy synth loop we'll get to in a second is I just muted that cymbal roll in the middle. You can hear it just cuts out there. And by doing that, we're able to really let that crazy synth sound cut through the speakers and burst out. This is probably a good time to talk about dropouts. One of the biggest things you can kind of do to add anticipation is to have everything just kind of die away. We'll get to it a little bit more when we get to the very end of this piece, but just kind of think about that. If you're having something building, building, and all of a sudden everything kind of just disappears, that's gonna add some anticipation, add a little excitement to the music. And then everything cuts out here so that we can hear this funky synth breaking through everything. For those modular synthy kind of sounds, I'm a big fan of this transport. It's made by Refractor Audio and Cell Dweller. He's an artist. He created all of these synth loops. And in this engine, you can really manipulate them out, get something totally unique. But these random kind of synth loops just bursting through the speakers, I think, add a lot of excitement. Which brings us right into big hits and some Brahms. So those big trailer hits, I used a combination of some Keep Force libraries and some Sample Tracks libraries that really just punch through. And as for these big Brahms, I used this Trailer Brahms library from Fallout Music Group. I absolutely love what they're doing. So 
so full and beefy. They've mixed these different synths and brass samples, and you got tons of controls and effects in the front of the interface just to kind of get a little bit more oomph out of those Brahms. The thing I like about these is they're kind of indistinct, meaning I'm able to manipulate them, change them whether one bar or two bar Brahms, and really get the sound that, although blends really nicely, it doesn't instantly have a thumbprint that I'll hear everywhere. Now for this next section, I combined Brahms, a bass, and hits, and I'll let you hear how all those sound together here, because it starts to get really meaty. So by themselves, I think those have got a lot of beef, a lot of impact, it is exciting. Although, I wanted to make it a unique kind of sound. So I went ahead and started playing with another cymbal kind of sound, a screeching bowed cymbal, and I went ahead and started playing with the um, effects rack. Again, with a starting point using one of those presets, modifying it to meet just what I wanted. So here's that sample by itself. <laughs> And now with the effects on. So not only am I uh, expanding it, giving it a lot of depth and space, but it's also bouncing around a little bit in the stereo field. And I want to note here that I actually went in to contact, use the pitch, control and detuned it so it would be playing the same frequency, the same D here for this piece as my Brahms. So when they all play together, they sound like this. So now we got a pretty unique kind of Brahm that's mixing hits, some bass, some Brahms, synth and brass samples, and this crazy cymbal that's affected, obviously. But one thing I did to really crank up and add excitement is use a little bit more of those synth loops to create chaos inside of each of those. So still keeping with that same simple theme we started with at the beginning, the one and two, and keeping it simple as far as the instrumentation. I've only got four tracks there, but because I've got these big spaces between them, I'm going to go ahead and fill those spaces with kind of a question and answer thing, except for every time the answer comes along, I want it to be completely unexpected. That's going to make your ear listen up. It's going to add even more excitement to the piece. So all of those answers are different. That means subconsciously, it's going to be grabbing the listener's attention going, here's something we know, here's something new, here's something we know, here's something new, here's something we know, here's something totally wacky that we knew. Let's listen to just those answers so you can see what I did. One of my favorite parts about this whole piece is this wackiness in the synth on our third answer here. After I programmed it in, I went ahead and dove in, played with a little bit of pitch for both of these two so that they kind of go across the stereo field. I thought that would be fun as well. And then we got a big trailer drop here. And this is another library from Fallout Music Group. This trailer drops that they've got is a very simple instrument, but very effective. And again, another thing I have to say I like about these instruments from Fallout Music Group, 
these drops as well, is they're generic enough that you can manipulate the effects and kind of give it its own quality without making it be so much of a signature sound that it's got a fingerprint that you start to recognize when you're watching lots of trailers or movies. So there's a lot of bite, a lot of high-end and growly distortion in that drop. I really like that myself. And another thing I did here to cause a little bit more excitement is during that drop, I added a beat. So we're no longer having this one, two, three, four. We've got a five before we go to our next downbeat. And you'll also notice I have a tempo map. One of the things real live players do so often to add excitement or musicality is to change tempo. Of course, building and ramping up in tempo is going to add a lot of excitement. I'll play it now from that Brahms section leading into the ending section, just so you can see how that tempo map affects the way the music feels. Now, before we dig into this last section, you'll hear there's a little bit of rolling into us, that downbeat and that hit, one of the Keep Forest samples. Now, one thing I'm doing at the end of the piece to make it more exciting is I'm breaking us down to a less full sound. I'm going to keep our tempo rising, but the actual number of instruments, the actual amount of sound coming through our headphones or speakers is going to be slightly reduced. And the reason I'm doing that is because it gives us much further to go from a lower volume to higher volume at the end. So you see how that works there? We just went from a pretty heavy amount of sound with those Brahms sections into this end section having a build. And now with that build, I've cut the instrumentation, the amount of sound way back so that I've got somewhere to go and I can build as I go up. Another big thing I'm sure you noticed is that we're no longer sticking to just one note. That's right. We're like 50 seconds into the piece and we've only used one note. Now we're going to climb a little bit. This is obviously a way that can add excitement. Moving up your scale or up chromatically, you're going to, of course, add excitement or tension. Like I'd shared uh, up on that Brahms section, we're going to increase the tempo even more. You can see with my tempo map here how we're going from 148 all the way to 171. That's quite a rise in tempo. That's something that you might not normally do, especially if you're doing trailer tracks because they want to have that same consistent beat. But for my money, for scoring customs or for scoring to picture, using tempo maps adds so much more excitement than sticking to a simple same tempo grid all the way through. So two other things we've done to add excitement in the past in this piece is subdivide rhythm. And we're doing that here with a couple samples from Sound Iron as well. This is one of my favorite Sound Iron libraries, Glitch Hero. Great little quirky odd things that are so easy to use. And you can hear the way I'm using them here where I'm subdividing pretty fast subdivisions with 16th notes, then 32nd notes going crazy. It definitely has this glitchy digital repetition, which is even more amplified because I'm using that tempo map there. And 
you can even see on that last one where it's the super fast 30 second notes actually built in a volume ramp just to give it more excitement. So the difference between the first four and the second four of this ending is the amount of intensity that it, of the things that are doing the Brahms. So for the first four, I'm using substance for that low, beefy low end, as well as horns, bassoons, and contra bassoons from Orchestral Tools Metropolis Arc Line. And then for the next time around, for the second four of that, I went ahead and used this Korn Miser, which is one of Orchestral Tools guitar sample libraries from their Metropolis Arc series. So you can hear with the effects, it's got this totally whacked out Marilyn Manson kind of sound to it. So because we've broken this whole thing down with a little less layering, then when we go and add our Brahm for the second four, it really adds more intensity. Now, one of the more obvious things that's added to add intensity, excitement, is risers. I'm using another one of the Fallout Music Group's Ascendance Libraries, and this is a three-channel rise designer. Really cool. A lot of good stuff in it. A lot of alive strings and whatnot. Uh, here is what that sounds like on its own. And I used one of those dropouts again where I just cut the riser off. It's unexpected for something to just cut out like that. Then we go back and use another trick we already talked about, which is unexpectedness in timing. Instead of waiting for four beats to hit a down for the ending hits, I waited five. Now I want to make sure to mention that this is something I've worked on for uh, about two or uh, three hours here just to share with you all these concepts I kind of had in the back of my head. It isn't mixed. It isn't mastered yet. However, there's probably going to be somebody out there that says it's distorted. It sounds horrible. Well, that is part of this excitement that's being built here for these brief few seconds at the end when the actual signal has too much going on and it is distorting. That's adding excitement too. It's these frequencies in the upper mids that has a acoustic psychoactive effect to your brain. And as long as you have a little bit of sub in there to lift up that low end, that's going to add a lot too. Now for that very last hit, there's a brom, there's a sub, there's a couple hits. But another thing in there that you might not have perceived is there's also another cymbal bow. Let's hear that last hit now and see if you can make out that cymbal bow. It's just back there in the background, a little bit of, eh, a little bit of tension added there. Thanks very much for hanging out with me. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please comment below. Let me know if you want to see more of these in the future. And if you have any specific topics, things you struggle with, things that you kind of find yourself coming up against over and over or don't know how to solve, ask me those questions below and I'll put them in my big list of things of maybe I'll do a video on to help you out. That's what these videos are all about. Thanks so much for spending time with me here today. You could have been anywhere in the world on YouTube and I'm so pleased we made it to the end together. Thanks for hanging out on the channel and we'll see you real soon.